you mentioned baby X. Um, so there's this young consciousness coming to be, came from a cell. It like, like that whole thing doesn't even make sense. It came from DNA. Yeah. And then there's this baby computer that just like grows and grows and grows and grows. And now there's a conscious being with extremely impressive cognitive capabilities with- uh, I don't Have know, you met him? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's actually really smart. He's uh, really smart, yeah. He's we weird. <laughs> Yeah, or a baby. He does. I don't. I. I haven't. I don't know a lot of other babies, but he exactly. seems really I don't smart. hang out with babies often, but this baby was very impressive. He does a lot of pranks and stuff. Oh, so he's like, like uh, he'll like he'll like give you a treat and then take it away and laugh and like stuff like that. So he's like a chess player. Uh, <laughs> so th here's a cognitive sort of like there's a computer being programmed. So he's, he's taking in the environment, interacting with a specific set of humans. Uh, how would you? First of all, what what is it? Well, let me ask, I want to ask, how do you program this computer? And also, how do you make sense of that there's a conscious being right there um, that wasn't there before? It's giving me a lot of crisis thoughts. I'm, I'm thinking, thinking really hard. I think that's part of the reason it's like I'm struggling to focus on art and stuff right now because Baby X is becoming conscious and like my, it's just reorienting my brain. Like my brain is suddenly totally shifting of like, oh shit, like the way we <laughs> raise children, like... Like, I hate all the baby books and everything. I hate them. Like, they're, oh, the art is so bad. And, like, like all the stuff, everything about all the aesthetics. And, like, I'm just like, ah, like, this is so. The programming languages we're using to program these baby computers isn't good. Yeah. Like, I, and I'm thinking, and I, I, not that I have, like, good answers or know what, yeah. to, do, know what to do, but um, <laughs> I'm just thinking really, really hard about it. I, uh, we we recently watched uh, Totoro with him, Studio oh, Ghibli. Yeah. Um, and it's just like a fantastic film. And he like responded to, I know you're not supposed to show baby screens too much, but like, I think it's the most sort of like, I feel like it's the highest art baby content. Like it's, it's it, it, it really speaks, there, there's almost no talking in it. It's really simple. All the, all the dialogue is super, super, super simple, you know, and it's, it's, like an, a one to three year old can like really connect with it. Like it, it feels like it's almost aimed at like a one to three year old. Um, but it's like great art and it's so imaginative and it's so beautiful. And um, like the first time I showed it to him, he was just like so invested in it. Unlike I've ever, unlike anything else I'd ever shown him. Like he was just like crying when they cry and laughing when they laughed. Like just like having this roller coaster of like emotions. Like, and he learned a bunch of words. Like he was, and he started saying Totoro and started just saying, all this stuff after watching Totoro and he wants to watch it all the time. And I was like, man, why isn't there an industry of this? Like, why aren't our best artists focusing on making art like for the birth of consciousness? Like, and, and, and I, and I, that's one of the things I've been thinking I really want to start doing, you know, I don't, I don't want to speak before I do things too mm -hmm. much, but like, yes. like I, I'm just like ages one to three, like, we should be putting so much effort into that. And the, the other thing about Totoro is it's like, um, it's like better for the environment because adults love Totoro. It's such good art that everyone loves it. Like I still have all my old Totoro merch from when I was a kid. Like I literally have the most ragged old Totoro merch. Um, like everybody loves it. Everybody keeps it. It's like, why does the art we have for babies need to suck and then and be not accessible to adults and then just be thrown out when um you know they age out of it like it's like i i i, I don't know I, i'm i don't have like a fully formed thought here but this is just something i've been thinking about a lot is like how do we like how do we have more totoro-esque content like how do we have more content like this that like is universal and everybody loves but is like really geared to an emerging consciousness Emerging consciousness in the first like three years of life that so much turmoil, so much evolution of mind is happening. It seems like a crucial time. Would you say to make it not suck, do you, do you think of basically treating a child like they have the capacity to have the brilliance of an adult or even beyond that? Is that how you think of that mind? Or No, because they still, they like it when you talk weird and stuff. Like they respond better to... Because even they can imitate better when your voice is higher. Like people say like, oh, don't do baby talk. But it's like when your voice is higher, it's closer to something they can imitate. So they like 
I see. Like the baby talk actually kind of works. Like it helps them learn to communicate. I've, I found it to be more effective with learning words and stuff. But like, you're not speaking. I'm not like speaking down to them. Like, yeah. Do you do you, do they have the capacity to understand really difficult concepts in a just in a very difficult different way, like an emotional intelligence about something oh. deep within? Oh yeah, no. Like if X hurts, like if X bites me really hard, and I'm like, ow. <laughs> he like he gets he's sad. He's he's like sad if he hurts me by accident. Yeah, which he, so he's huge, sad. so he hurts me a lot by accident. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's so interesting that 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 mind emerges and and he and children don't really have a memory of that time, so we can't even have a conversation with them about yeah, it. Yeah, thank so God they stuff. don't have a memory of this time because, like, think about like, I mean, with our youngest baby, like, it's like I'm like, have you read the sci-fi short story? I have no mouth, but I must scream. Good title, no. Oh man. I mean, you should read that. Uh, mouth, that, 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 scream. that that it's. I I hate getting into this Roko's Basilisk shit. It, it's kind of a, a story about the um about like, um, uh, an AI that's like torturing someone in eternity, and they have like no body. The way they describe it, it sort of sounds like what it feels like like being a baby. Like you're conscious, and you're just getting inputs from everywhere and you're you have no muscles and you're like jelly and you like can't move and you try to like communicate but you can't communicate and we're and like you're just like in this like hell state i think it's good we can't remember that like my oh, my you, little baby is just exiting that like she's starting to like get muscles and have more like autonomy but like watching her go through the opening phase i was like i was like this does not seem good oh you think it's kind of like like i think it's I think it might be really, really vi violent. Really, like violent, mentally violent, psychologically violent. Consciousness emerging, I think, is is a very violent Never thing. Never thought I, about that. I think it's possible that we all carry a, quite a bit of trauma from it that and, we don't. I, I think that would be a good thing to study because I think if, I think addressing that trauma, like I think that might be. Oh, you mean like echoes of it are still there in I the think, shadow somewhere? I think it's got to be. I, I, I feel like this, this help, the helplessness, the, the like existential and that like fear of being in like an unknown place bombarded with inputs and being completely helpless like that's got to be somewhere deep in your brain and that can't be good for you